Rishti, Mr. Hicks here. Uh, today, y'all are going to be learning about the battle tactics and soldiers of soldiers of the ancient Greeks. Um, I will be using a video, some video game footage for this from Rome Total War. Uh, it's an older game, but it should work well for this kind of thing. Plus, well, I already own it. That always helps. Now, we're going to be looking at hoplites and the phalanx. Uh, to put that simply, that's basically Greeks and walls of spears. You can see kind of a picture here. We'll talk about that in just a second. Now, what we're going to be looking at in this video is the circumstances of ancient Greece and warfare, the equipment and their soldiers, uh, their battle tactic, which you can see is already the phalanx. We'll talk more about that. And then we'll get into the fun part, which is showing how these tactics work in the video game uh, simulation. Um, just so you're recalling, um, or to get started really, Greece is a land of narrow valleys. Um, and these, in these narrow valleys, surrounded by mountains, or in some cases the, o the sea, you had city-states. And these city-states often were in fierce competition to show dominance, to secure trade, roots or resources, um, and there was always intense rivalry between these city-states. Now, the Greek culture, uh, their popular culture, applauded the tactical skill of their best military commanders, uh, and often these military commanders found themselves in positions of power uh, in city-states, provided they were successful, of course. Um, but, however, we're not going to be focusing much on the military um, political leaders. We're going to be looking at your foot soldiers, um, the people who did the real fighting in, the, in these battles, and, well, in a lot of cases, the dying part, too. Now, perhaps fittingly, um, Hoplites, the basic soldier of the Greek army, was, comes from the word, Hoplite comes from the Greek word to mean tool or equipment. Um, perhaps an irony, these are the soldiers that do the dying and the fighting uh, in battle. Now, hoplites are usually drafted in most city-states. Male citizens are expected to spend a bit of time in the military. Uh, for example, even the famous Socrates is noted to have had a brief military career um, fighting in, for the city of Athens. Now, as a result, most hoplites are not professional soldiers. It's a part-time duty or expectation of the male citizen. Now, that isn't all hoplites. Some hoplites were expected to um, be professionals, and that was their job. Notable examples would be Sparta's army and Thebes' golden band. Uh, in Sparta, all male citizens were expected to serve in their city-state's army. Um, all work uh, and jobs not related to being soldiers were handled by slaves that the uh, Spartan city-state maintained. Um, Thebes, their golden band, is also a notable military unit, an elite corps of hoplites. Um, they were, they were a unit of 150 homosexual couples who vowed to defend their city and their partner to death. Um, those are just some notable examples of famous types of soldiers. We are going to be looking at more generally the hoplite, the basic hoplite that was found in every city-state from Athens to Sparta to Thebes and, and beyond. Um, now, hoplites typically existed from the 7th to the 4th century BC. Um, and let's, looking at their equipment, they had a spear, which you can kind of see here. Uh, this spear was usually 8 feet long, um, typically made of bronze or iron in the later periods. Um, the, well, the spearhead was. This, the shaft was made out of wood. Um, soldiers typically also carried a massive shield. This picture doesn't quite do it justice for the front view, but this shows you kind of from the side. It was going to protect most of the body and the upper legs. Um, now, the spear and the shield were the Greek soldiers' primary weapons. Uh, in close quarters, it was not unheard of to depend on, the, on a short sword. Uh, weapons, those are the weapons, and the shield is kind of a 
piece of armor. Um, also protecting the soldier would have been uh, a, a helmet, um, a breastplate. Some soldiers also had shin, shin guards down here, arm guards as well. Uh, in case you're wondering, some soldiers had these elaborate plumes. That was kind of just to show off. Not every soldier had them. Um, one of the important things to note is these are amateur soldiers, and all their equipment is paid for by themselves. So a richer per, a person with a richer day job would have nicer equipment, whereas a poorer soldier, a poorer person would have um, less higher quality equipment. So ideally, you'd have um, if you were one of the richer people, you'd have a bronze helmet, uh, bronze breastplate, bronze shin guards, and arm guards. Um, also, you may note there's a lack of sandals. Uh, soldiers did not necessarily wear shoes in combat uh, in this period. Uh, going barefoot was fairly common. Now, let's look at the tactics. So, hoplites really had one major battle tactic. Um, this is what was called the phalanx. Um, you can see it's spelled here, misspelled. Oopsies. Anyways, um, so phalanx, that's how it's spelled. If you have several phalanxes, it apparently spells with an E-S. <clears throat> Anyways, so what a phalanx is is relatively simple. You get a group of hoplites into rows, and then you get those rows into columns. Um, we're talking about eight, eight men deep usually uh, was, is generally what's recorded as the preferred tactic. And then the first two or three rows put their spears down, their shields, their shields go up. And this is the front, the attacking portion of the phalanx. Phalanxes fight whatever's in front of them, facing them with a wall of spears. Um, you can see that the soldiers in the back have their spears held at it, held either straight up if they're in the way back or at an angle. Now the reason for this was is that other soldiers in Greek armies typically shot arrows from bows uh, or through stones or in some cases javelins. Uh, essentially these giant spears, they would deflect uh, some of the arrows and um, javelins and rocks and so that you couldn't get necessarily hurt by an artillery barrage um, or as hurt. Um, you can see how phalanxes in, in Greek battles, how phalanxes fought, is two phalanxes would approach each other and, well, um, push into each other until one side cracked and broke. Um, essentially, with, the, with this wall of spears, anything that isn't a phalanx is going to die. Uh, phalanxes are notoriously difficult to attack head on. Um, this is also worth noting because often Greeks would fight in narrow valleys, and so what you do is you put all your phalanxes in a row and have them and have them move down forward towards the enemy. Um, I'll show you some more about how that tactic actually works in just a moment. But no, so here, just taking a look, these are some views. This is what a phalanx looks like from the front. Um, not a very common view because typically if you're at this angle, you're dead. Um, then if you've got, you've got this here, a side view, and this is how the ancient Greeks depicted this on a vase, I believe, or a vase if you insist. But, well, enough of me chotting it up. Uh, let's actually go into the battle simulator and see how it things go. Alrighty, so welcome to Rome Total War. This is an older game. I believe it came out in the early 2000s. Um, but it's an excellent game for showing off ancient battlefield situations. Uh, as we can see here, I've got uh, five phalanx units. Uh, four of them are in a row. One of them is in the back, and that's the commander's unit. And that's just the way the game sets it up. Um, they'll be matching a similar amount of troops. Um, in case you're wondering, I pre-recorded this um, in the event, well, that I got confused. Anyways, <clears throat> so you can see that the phalanxes are set up here. 
Um, you've got the first two rows with their spears lowered. You've got the back rows with their spears raised. You may notice that these units are a bit small. They're not as deep as the historical depictions uh, show. Um, I'm guessing that's because I did some sort of setting wrong. And have the unit's not the right size. Um, but anyways, they're getting a bit whiny. Uh, let's uh, start rolling the battle and see what how a phalanx works. Okay, battle started. Um, actually, okay, I got my numbers wrong. They're facing a ton of enemy soldiers. Um, let's slow this down and get a look. So, they're facing Celtic barbarians. Most of these soldiers are lightly armed, lightly armored. Kind of give you an idea of how many soldiers fought in the ancient period. Um, equipment was usually not standardized. Um, usually it was bring your own stuff. So if you were rich, you got you brought good weapons. If you weren't, well, you didn't. Um, you can kind of see that my phalanxes are forming the standard battle line. Their full intent is to just kind of sit here and take anything that is stupid enough to attack it head on. Um, but you can kind of see that the enemy is trying to roll, um, send troops this way, and try and roll things around this way. But let's speed things up, and okay, I'm not going to put up with that flanking maneuver, so I'm going to put my troops like that. So you can kind of see they're trying to flank me, but they're not trying hard enough, and they can't move fast enough, being that they're infantry. But, Calvary is one of the best counters to a phalanx, but it must attack... Oh, now we're getting to the attack. So let's zoom in on the thick of it. As you can see, that the lances are quite deadly. The initial charge of these um, warriors from Gaul has utterly and completely failed. The phalanx is really just kind of sitting there. He's not having a good day. Well, he lost his spear. You can see here that they draw their swords. Um, this was often the case that the soldiers on the edges of a phalanx were often the most um, most experienced, and they also often suffered the most casualties. Uh, you can see here now that the enemy is routed. It's because I'm a better General, commander. Please press forward so that the spirit of his army is a broken tool. Uh, thank you. Com video game commentary. This is and a heroic victory worthy victory. of Greek soldiers. So this is worth looking at the statistics here. You can see that 403 or so uh, Greek soldiers were able to take on over a thousand of these other soldiers. Um, there's further breakdown statistics, but you get the basic idea. It looks like this is going to be phalanx versus phalanx here. Now what you may have noticed is some of the troops are not in phalanx formation. Um, that is because they are not um, phalanx troops. Most of these are javelins or um, slingers, people with slingshots that threw rocks. Um, often armies had a mixture of these two types of units. Uh, let's roll the footage. I like to dink around with my setups. Okay, so, standard battle formation in a phalanx versus phalanx battle, or most battles in the ancient world, is you would have your missile troops, your troops that threw projectiles, out in front. Their job would be to harass the enemy, and then when, as the enemy got closer, run away and let the real infantry, um, the, the, the spears, do the real work of the battle. But these soldiers were great for harassing the enemy, and preventing them from just going around you. Uh, as you saw with that battle I had before was just a phalanx. Um, that's what we're doing here. Units, move out. So you can see that the javelins have done their job and now they're getting the heck out of there. Um, there is some glitches with this game. Uh, you're dealing with an artificial AI. These hoplites are very slow moving. They on a, the AI of this game, the artificial intelligence, thinks they can chase these guys. It doesn't work that way. We're going to focus on the real battle up here. Let's 
See those hoplites? Those hoplites, even though they've been hit by those javelins, they haven't really suffered many casualties. Uh, there's... Um, yep, he's not the lucky one. Uh, should have spent a bit more on his armor. Um, now my javelin troops should realize that they need to get out of the way. My, my phalanx is about to charge their phalanx. Alrighty. If they will get into formation... So this is how phalanx fight a phalanx fights another phalanx. Uh, you can see the Greek one, they kind of fell apart because they broke formation. Unit Discipline forward. is absolutely important. What the heck are they doing? Oh well, I'll we'll go up here. That's why you have multiple units in this game. Because like humans, they're stupid too. Alrighty, the Greeks have lowered their lances. And the battle's begun. You can see that the, what's happened is my military unit was more disciplined, but when the, the enemy close general quarters flees get... like a frightened child, now attack and break the will of his followers. Thank you. Uh, you can see that my phalanx has done superior, superior in holding its formation. The key thing to a good phalanx is that it is disciplined and it maintains its formation constantly. Because essentially the guys in the back, their job is to push the lance, the lances and the men in the front. As you can see, this is not going to end well for the Greeks. As you can see here, I've brought my other units in to attack from the sides. Phalanxes are useless um, when attacked from the sides because their spears and the pushing force is all going this way, going forward. Thank you, Warhorn. You can see that there's a whole bunch of stuff going on around this battlefield, uh, but we'll stop this battle here. I win, obviously. Good show. Alrighty, so I got some bad news. If you're rooting for the teacher in this round, um, he's going to lose this battle. You can kind of see here that I've put together a variety of troops that are not hoplites. I've got spearmen, basically guys with spears, swordsmen, or infantry, guys with, um, well, swords. And then I've also got a lot of cavalry, uh, mostly light cavalry. One of the things that's worth noting is in the ancient period, there was no such thing as the... Um, spur. So all of you who can ride horses, imagine for a second that you did not have access to wonderful things like spurs, stirrups, or really even good saddles. Most of these guys are kind of sitting on blankets. But <clears throat> Let's watch this battle. Um, you can see here I'm trying to do the ideal tactic if you had to face a phalanx in theory and you did not have phalanx troops. What you would do is you would hope to outnumber the enemy, and you would hope that these infantry units could attack the phalanx headlong, pin it down, while other units went around and tried to flank them. Um, well, we'll see if that works. Let's speed things up. Alrighty, the battle lines are drawn. Um, just as you can see, the enemy has a lot of phalanxes here. In fact, they have enough phalanxes to cover the entire battle line. Um, and then some. Units, move out. Now you can see here, I'm trying to shuffle my cavalry around. Because the artificial intelligence in this game knows that cavalry is evil and we'll try and adjust accordingly. So what I'm doing here is to try and to shuffle the cavalry around and see if I can confuse the enemy. Um, it fails. Epically. Arguably this is one of the worst battles I've ever fought. You can see I even have a further disadvantage. Oh, here we go. I got that, that area that's blocked off. Now you can see I'm trying to attack the enemy from behind. I've got my cavalry trying to is, you trying to get, look for an opening. 
Now, see, this unit's already broken. They couldn't take the heat. This phalanx is trying to chase a cavalry unit. You can see the difference in the spears. These spearmen just cannot the general reach. General is fleeing from the enemy. This is a shameful thing for your whole army. Yeah, this is kind of embarrassing. These guys are holding out okay. Let's see why they're holding out. Now the reason why these guys are holding out is because these guys aren't. No, never mind. You gotta hold your phalanx. Oh, that was brutal. You can see that the cavalry here. Most of those casualties were within the first few seconds of hitting that phalanx. Um, I might try replaying that and see if I can get that to work. Units, march! Wait, nope, I got these units here. It's probably the best camera work you're going to see of this game. Now see, the hope was is that I would get them on the slip, but they're they were more ready than I was thought they were. The general has chosen cowardice and runs away. Okay, so as you can see, the cavalry broke. Um, now that phalanx wasn't as ready as they should have been for my charge, but we'll watch another f bit of footage to get an idea of that. Alrighty, so you might have noticed in the other battles um, there was kind of a lack of, it was an open field, which it still worked because essentially my troops were able, the troop, the phalanx troops were essentially wide enough to block any attacks. This time we're going to show you what happens when you try and attack a bridge. Essentially this is where the phalanx does its best. Um, if you remember the movie 300, that historically inaccurate monstrosity, great action flick though um, they were fighting in a narrow point where a phalanx operates at its best um, but so this is how we're going to kind of replicate that in this game is with this with this bridge here um, essentially what's going to happen is I'm going to park my troops on the bridge to show you what happens when you try to attack a phalanx head-on uh, pro tip, as you may have guessed, it's a really bad idea. You can already hear the archers going. My troops are kind of reforming so they can get on the bridge, but eh, it doesn't matter, there's enough lances. The Egyptian cavalry is about to have a very good Great God be praised! The enemy general is killed! Fear makes a home in our enemy's hearts! Units, move out! Now this phalanx is kind of falling apart because essentially I've got like three or four phalanxes running into each other. Ah, uh, it'll work though. Alrighty, here comes the chariots. March. That was not a bright idea. I think this this recording is pretty much done. You can see the phalanxes are more or less stuck, and they're sitting there. The enemy force can periodically throw troops at it, but it's not going anywhere. Victory! By the degree of fight, perhaps, but victory all the same! That AI um, announcer is rather annoying. Um, that was obviously my victory. Await my orders! Alrighty, so we're going to get to see a special little treat. This is a different tactic. Um, Alexander the Great, a Macedonian general, was famous for replicating some of the Greek battle tactics, but he essentially took them to a different um, degree of skill. 
And so what you're looking at is a is is technically a phalanx, but you'll notice something different. The shields are smaller, and in a second here you'll find out that the lances are significantly longer. Um, the Macedonian armies preferred what was called a pike, um, essentially a spear that is 15 feet long as opposed to 8 feet long. Um, this tactic seemed to be very effective in fighting the Greeks, and it essentially works like a phalanx, only um, more stuff. And we're going to pit it against a phalanx way over yonder. Well, several phalanxes. Well, we'll be rushing into battle. Let's speed things along. Units, march! So essentially the idea behind a phalanx, the phalanx here, is pikemen were uniquely designed to destroy phalanxes. Move out. Essentially by one-upping the phalanx's superior um, lance link. Okay, here we go. Yeah, now I can just sit here with the camera. Formations are charging. Now you might think that that reach is going to make all the difference. That guy is not going to do that. No, essentially the idea behind this is to counter phalanx, you either need to outflank it or have, throw a better phalanx. In which case, what the Macedonians did is they had larger fa larger phalanxes with longer spears. So we'll stop that there. I win the battle, of course. I usually win, except when I intend not to. Alrighty. So, we're going to see a different kind of battle here today. We're going to see how the one of the greatest land armies of, in the world took on phalanxes, the Roman army. Um, this is the post-Marian reform Roman army. Um, you'll learn what that means later. But essentially, the Roman army fights radically different than um, the ancient Greeks fought or anyone the ancient Greeks really took on. speed things along. Oh yeah, the camera only moves. Alrighty, so one of the big differences is Roman troops are much better armored. You may have noticed that many of the opponents, the Romans, that the Greeks fought did not wear much armor. And the Greeks didn't wear a whole lot of armor. I mean, a lot of Greeks went barefoot, for instance, on the battlefield. Um, Roman soldiers... You can see they're wearing much more armor. They're wearing shoes. Um, in fact, it was commonplace for those shoes to have kind of metal spikes in them. Um, essentially, uh, cleat. Think of them like soccer cleats for sandals. The other thing Roman soldiers did is they carried a special type of spear, which I'll talk about more, but essentially this lance is designed to stick into shields. And once you have a giant spear, stuck in your shield, it's really hard to use that shield effectively. And they threw this before they charged, typically. This is not going to be pretty. You can see that it took down, the lances took down about five of them. Oh, yeah. Some legionaries are having a bad day. Roman legionaries were notoriously disciplined as well. So what the Romans would do in fighting a phalanx is they'd use one unit, the unlucky fellows, to pin the phalanx. And then they'd use other troops to flank it. Sometimes cavalry, sometimes other infantry units. You can see that the morale is pretty high amongst my troops. Uh, 
What a glorious day for the Empire. You can see that the Roman troops, their armor is certainly helping a lot in keeping them alive. Those big shields make a world of difference. No, not for that guy. See that the phalanx position is kind of doomed. They have to fight in two directions. The Romans will break them. Uh, with superior weapons, armor, and, well, in this case, tactics. Well, you can see, breaking a phalanx, even when it's cornered, is hard. Because a well-disciplined phalanx is not going to give up easily. One unit is broken. This unit back here is holding out pretty decently, and this one here is essentially got the team. But they're not going to do long, because now the Roman soldiers are starting to flame. Who's my commander? What a smart move. Some of the troops are throwing their lances. Particularly mean of my troops. See, the phalanxes are cracking, especially this one back here. I'm going to probably edit out a lot of this footage. This is taking forever. But that's how phalanxes go, is they either break quickly when they're flanked, or they essentially stab until the people collapse from exhaustion. General Rome demands victory from her generals, and this day is clearly our victory! So you can see that these are fairly balanced numbers. Um, typically, the, typically, if you wanted to fight a phalanx, you'd need superior numbers, but in this case, um, you needed um, better equipped troops. So that was, that's another way that some, some armies took on phalanxes, is um, have better equipment, have better troops, and use better tactics. Now that concludes um, our video on hoplites and the phalanx. Um, thank you for watching. Uh, Thank you for putting up with my rather amateurish video editing skills. I think the last time I made a major video was while well, in high school. I'm certain that shows. Anyways, um, that's all that I've got for you. Remember how hoplites operate. Remember what works against them, why they work in the first place, and how to counter them. And that's it.